Did you know Bond students have been in every Olympic since 92? How do they do it? Bond is known for its prowess in the sporting domain. With incredible facilities throughout campus, it means you can easily transition from this to this. Sport is alive and well at Bond University. Welcome to round two of the Bond University Quaffle W. We're at the canal at the Bond University Oval on Yugam Bear Country to watch the Bond University Bull Sharks take on the Southport Sharks in this top of the table clash, keeping in mind it's only round two, but <laughs> it is, of course, still top of the table. Uh, my name's Hannah Davies. I'll be your host today. And in play-by-play, -play, I have Daniel Viles. How are you doing, Hannah? Very good. Yeah, really nice conditions so far. It's... Not too windy at all, very sunny, pretty nice conditions. And, of course, uh, the broadcast today is brought to you by Double Take Sports. Big thank you to them for bringing us live the Bond University Quaffle W from Bond University Oval. So both these teams had pretty comfortable wins last year. Well, Southport defeated Wollaston Grange 79-8 and Bond defeated Yoronga 91-1. So fair to say that neither team's have been challenged yet. No, it was a good um, opportunity to blow out the cobwebs last week. Both Wilston Grange and Yoronga have you know, lost a few players in the uh, off-season, so they're still building connections and all the rest of it. So don't want to patronise them, but there's very much a case of they were able to... These two teams were able to blood a lot of debutants last week, get them used to the State League, and now they will um, get a real taste for it and see... I mean, the, just talking to a few of the players before the game, 
they really look forward to this. Part of it is the geographical proximity. Although they are 13 k's apart, we only call it a derby because they're on the Gold Coast. That's like calling Aspley versus Yoronga a local derby as well. They're about 13 k, or maybe maybe a bit more. That's but <laughs> oh yeah, no, no, us Brisbane people have no sense of what goes on outside <laughs> no. of Brisbane. But but no, they are keyed up for this, and of course a lot of players who know each other not only through playing previously for sides like Cool and Gadda in this competition, but also through places like the Suns Academy or the junior clubs, particularly Burley, Broad Beach and Surfers. So both these clubs, uh, in case you're just tuning in for the first time this year, well, Bonds are last year's premiers in both seniors and reserves. And Southport were the minor premiers, but did actually fail to make the grand final. They knocked out by Aspley in that final elimination final. So as well, a bit of context, both clubs are in their second year under their respective coaches, Peter Doherty for Southport and Andy Lovell for Bond, but two very clever footy minds. So the history between these two sides, Daniel, what are we, what awaits us and what's behind us, I guess? I suppose, I mean, let's talk about the past first because it's happened and I don't have to speculate, but six matches and the statistical oddity is that all of them have been won by the away team. Now, what happened last year was that with Bond being affected so much by the program for the Suns Academy, they essentially had two squads last year. The one that had the Academy players like Havana, Havana Harris and Ava Usher and Josie McCabe, um, Niali Milne, I could keep going for about half an hour there, and the one that didn't. So when they played here in round four, Bond were didn't have those players. Southport won fairly easily. The next two games, Bond were at full strength and they won... Easily is the wrong word, but they, they were certainly, you know, the, the results weren't close. So there's been, there have been a lot of sort of co-commitant factors in the matches so far. What we haven't had yet in this rivalry, which is building and the players know it, we haven't had a classic match yet. And, they, and I turn up to all of them hoping that today's the day. We had one five-point result back uh, two years ago at Fankhauser in the wet where Bond had one of their, probably their best victory that year. But we haven't had the thriller yet, and I'm hoping for that today. Our umpires today are brought to you by Bradenham's Windows and Doors. And in the field, we've got Ashlyn Gardner and Molly Jennings. On the boundary, Matthew Joyce and Tynan O'Toole. And on the goal, Jim Kelly and Hayden Johnson. And, of course, before we get underway for this massive clash, it is, of course, Local Footy Week. It's underway and we're celebrating the return of local footy, which is fantastic. So if you play footy or if not, just get involved by wearing your local junior footy jumper at training and absolutely tag AFLQ in any photos on social media. And, of course, junior and youth footy, their seasons are just around the corner and there's still time to register and join in the fun. So visit play.afl to find your local club. Don't forget, local footy week, wear your jerseys. And juniors, there's still stuff to come for you, so keep an eye out. Just seeing the players take position now. Bond University are known for switching players around. I'm seeing Steph O'Brien come onto the bench to start with. That is such a Peter Doherty move. The, the way that he will often start star players and even captain Steph is vice captain this year on the bench not surprised at all what I was going to say with Bond Paris Lightfoot made her name as a halfback now playing on the right wing she's closest to camera at the moment next to Abby Pluples from Southport who had a big year Jasmine Davidson has been in the ruck in the past now centre halfback Molly Jennings preparing to get us underway it is round two it is the seventh Shark Stoush Taylor Gregory getting the better of the first ruck. Here is Arafa. He's able to just hack it forward ahead of Hannah Davies. Bursting through the other way was Sonny Lappin. Southport with the first inside 50. Dropped by Georgia Davis. Megan Hunt. Megan Hunt looking for a bit of space. Got it wide again looking for Lappin. Charlotte Taylor brought down by Hunt. Moving away was Imogen Evans. Bond looking to bring it out through left halfback. Turned over again. Southport regained through Watt. Ship. Puts it inside, goes towards Hunt. Hunt looking for space. Easy mark. Did it go 15? That's a very short 15. But Dakota Barron, six goals last week. She'll have the opportunity. And a great opportunity created by Hunt as well. Already having a massive impact after that season off. And Barron will have to hook this round. Steady lineup. Nice march forward. Kicks it on the right. Will it go through? Ah, behind. Tricky angle, though. Particularly for a right footer, and the natural bend for a right footer is right to left. 
but Bond to play it out. Straight into the pack though. No one quite there to pick it up. Bonds have the numbers. Lightfoot the captain. Sends it around. Played naturally in that defensive position already. And Gregory with the steal. Lightfoot just can't get a hand on it. Sexton. Down the line, beautiful. It's amazing, Evans. Evans continues to play at the right, looking for Nayali Mill. It's a beautiful marking style. Mill has going to see a lot of that over the next hundred years or so. Here at least twenty. She'll play it up to centre half forward, looking for the run of Ivorak. And over the back, didn't find Ivorak. Did find Abby Bevan. Another tall. Played a lot in 2022 in first grade. Not so much last year. She was on the wrong angle, so told to retake the kick. And already Southport have the numbers down there. This battle comes with already a lot of history from last year, so it's unsurprising to see that Southport already pushing their numbers down, knowing how strong Bond are. So Bevan lines up. She'll have a swing at this. It'll fall short into the pack, and that's a beautiful take. That's Clark. Played a lot for Bond a few years ago and, of course, played in the AFLW with the Brisbane Lions. Been gone for a little while. Good to see you back in footy. Ariana Clark. Again, a steady walk towards. Should be right in front. Great swing. And that's the first goal of the day. The sound effects at Bond to, of University today brought to you by Count Von Count. Bit of thunder and lightning as Lee Alder comes off the field. Also, uh, Abby Pluple's coming off. Ariana Clark scored last week, but uh, but I think there's a little bit something special. This will be her first game ever against Southport because they weren't in the comp when she was playing Quaffle W before. But uh, being played forward is a forward pocket in this side. She's uh, played in other positions before. I seem to remember her as a defender. I'm hoping I'm not having a old man false memory there, but... But uh, she did write an art article for the Athlete's Voice a few years ago. Find it online and read the Ari Ariana Clark story. Sorry, Hannah. And good touch from Gregory. Straight to a teammate. Bond pounce. And that's a great kick from Southport. It'll go. Oh, it just hits the hand. Hunt, she's celebrating. We'll have to wait for the confirmation. And it's a goal. Megan Hunt. Back from the return, had last year off injured and already making such an impact. The kick came in from Tiani Brown, who's come up from Shepparton. Thank you, Kaut. And But again, Megan Hunt, she began as a forward for Cooperu, won a best on ground for Cooperu in a grand final uh, back in the uh, mid-2010s. And so, you know, had a lot of her career at inside, um, inside midfield. 28 now, back sniping at forwards. What have you seen? Oh, oh, no love lost between these two sides. Clark and Fogus. Fogus, a former AFLW player herself. And I think uh, game recognises game. So Gregory has the tap down. It was Zarafa who got the ball out of the midfield last time around. Good attacking of the ball at the front. I think that's from Lapp and it was. Out wide to Fogus. Fine ship. Inside to Zarafa. She tried to fend off two bull sharks and it didn't work. Paris Lightfoot, doesn't matter where you put her on the field, she will tackle fiercely. So Bond look to switch here. Doesn't make it too far, though. So will sit in the middle. Numbers around. Southport get the hands on it. Can't quite find someone. Great pressure. Sexton gets the hands to it, and she'll be taken down with Ship on the ground. So we'll have a ball up here. Ship captaining by herself this year. Um, was a co-captain last year with... Uh, just Maloof for a lot of the year. Selena Priest. Maloof, of course, gone across to coach Surface Paradise, I believe, in the quaffle. Contact above the shoulder. Taylor Gregory has the free kick just to the left of the centre circle. Roosts it. Her kicking distance is doubled in the last couple. Brilliant! Dakota Barron! Dakota Barron from the back of the pack. 
takes a screamer at Bond University Oval. A Mark of the Year nomination at least. That was hers just for seconds. No one even close to taking that incredible hands. Scored goals for Queensland under 18s last year and is a brilliant forward target, pretty much from central casting. Had one miss from a tight angle. Look to be off to the right. It's into the pocket. Just off the hands of Lappin. Will be a boundary throw in in the forward pocket unless it was called already out on the full. Forgive me for missing the signal. And Sonny Lappin, of course, that surname may be familiar to some. And that is, of course, Father Matt Lappin, who's coaching Surface Paradise in the Quaffle. Also played a bit of AFL. Yeah, a little bit. Just a bit. Loose ball in the right forward pocket. No space to move in whatsoever. And last to get up with it was uh, Sophie Balcom, starting the year in top grade. Good work from Barron. Thought she had a teammate. In the end, it was pilfered by Imogen Evans. The tackling is fierce. We're seeing all the skills on show. We're seeing great marks. We're seeing good goal kicking, good goal sniping. The Southport attacks. And Seth O'Brien puts the foot on it. It'll trickle down. Southport defence, though. Havana Harris just trying to push that ball out. I think it'll roll behind as a behind. Yeah, Grace Moody with the experienced hands on that. Thought, I'm not risking a goal here. That's going straight through for a point. And it was a smart play from Harris to one of the tallest on the field right now, just to sit in that square. Scoreboard here hasn't registered the behind. Now it has. So Southport with a two-point lead, courtesy of two minus shots. Taylor marks at left halfback. And CJ Landwehr just coming onto the field, pushing straight into that forward wing. As the ball beats Harrington over the boundary. Good pick up, Hannah. One of the widest fields in the competition, 131 metres wide. 151 long, quite circular. In front of the grandstands. Lloyd on Dabu just had that kick smothered but had the presence of mind to be able to get the kick away. Unfortunately for her, she kicked it away. A lot of new faces for Bond. We're gonna we're gonna nail it by the end of the season as it comes inside to Kalija. A couple of years down from Yapoon now. Brilliant Yapoon Swan, beautifully picked up at the back by Welsh. A halfback of growing reputation. Suckling, who's come up from the Riverina area to Queensland this year. Good to see her in the Bond University Quaffle W. Inside to Salisbury. That hit Harris rather than Harris grabbing it. Just got the fumbles. Coming through was Georgia Davis. She's brought, in fact, Lightfoot's been able to snatch that from the middle of the pack. Went through to Meyer. Reverse from Taylor Gregory. The skills are on show. Kicked away by Tiani Brown. Southport on the chase. They'll be taken down. And it's holding the ball. Gemma Blair. So Blair, she's keeping in this danger period. And, oh, that's why you don't. But Southport, Davies, just drop. Lappin goes in. And Davies and Lappin will force the ball up here. Some of the reflex catching in the middle of the field before was just unbelievable. But shows good awareness. They're all very fit in this side. Gregory pushes it wide. Maddie Watt. Emma, Emma. Turnover at the back as Bond seeks to run it back towards 50. Suckling comes off. Zarafa comes on. Free kick to Southport. Running around was Gordon on Dabu. That clears everyone. Wrong side. Tap through. One of the stranger goals you'll see this season, but Megan Fogus took advantage of some disorganisation in the Bond defence. And the former Geelong AFLW player is on the board. Well, she certainly sees that opportunity. I think every other player had assumed it had gone for behind, seemingly left it. But Megan just swooping in. 
It was bizarre. I mean, you, you always play the whistle. You never assume, thank you, Count, you never assume that the play is over until it is. Fogus has been around too long to be um, uh, 28 years old. She's been around too long to be fooled by anything like that. Following through, Chelsea, Chelsea Chesterfield of Cooperoo has made a career out of scoring goals like that. Sorry, Hannah. It's a new ruck for Southport. Georgia Davis. He's indeed one of the Davis sisters, very talented footballers and netballers, mind you. Sorry, ex-netballers. This is true. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. So Harris, great outlet to Harrington. Charging down the side, a beautiful sidestep. Coming around, Harrington again. Fumbles and just won't be able to break through. So ball up here. Strong tackle from Taylor Gregory. He just gains a skill every year. Tackling's already looking better than it was in 2023. Beautiful work from Taylor. She goes towards centre half forward. Kalija, too easy. And I do her a disservice. She made that look easy by anticipating where that was going to fall about half an hour before anyone else did. Now, I remember Kalija having a fairly long set shot. Scored a squillion goals for Yapoon when she played in the Capricornia competition. Distance looks okay. Just to the left. Minus score. Margin reduces to seven. Tick over seven minutes remaining in the first quarter. Round two, Bond University, Quaffle W. So Southport look to the wing, closest to the scoreboard. Beautiful boot. Milne was lurking, but it goes to the hands of Southport. Great run down here. Nearly taken. Bond will have a chance, and that'll roll out. That was Alicia Gordon who nearly took the specky over on the uh, in front of the grandstands. It's an east-west facing ground. This that's actually the southern wing. It's um, the universities in Wilston Grange go sideways with their grounds. So boundary throwing on the southern wing. Came back to Landwehr, wrestling for it. Zarafa pilfers. Goes towards centre half forward. Was looking for the run of Lappin. Wasn't quite able to hold on, but the one-two worked well. Hunt handballs to O'Brien. O'Brien looking for, well, an empty goal square at the moment. Needs to roll on. It's not on target. Will just stay in. Moody unable to get there. Barron breaks free. Barron busts two tackles and then sprays the shot just as the videographers were getting ready. The strength of Dakota Barron. That, that was incredible. I know she missed, but... Taking away from that, just incredible. The chase down, the decision making. I almost thought she'd leave it for Bond to take and then go defensive. We'll talk about her being selected ahead of Maggie O'Connell in a moment. But uh, first of all, how lucky is Peter Doherty to have that choice? And secondly, I think we're getting some clues as to why that decision was made. So high ball from Bond. Plenty at it. Bulldozing through with Southport. Bond do well to get it in the air. Sexton goes long. Doesn't quite find hands yet. Southport, again, push it to O'Brien. Beautiful hands. She'll switch. Clever play goes to Hunt. Can't quite get it. Punch from behind. Great second effort from Hunt, though. Comes in. Ship. Wrestling. A ball up here. Sorry, not a ball up. Just notice Southport are playing one of their emergencies. Just getting details on that. Again, Southport so dangerous down the corridor. O'Brien, little chip over to no one. And Bond clean up. Milne pushes it wide to the wing. Chasing down is Evans. Nearly taken down. Does well to stay alive there. Have another stoppage here. So number 31 for Southport is Chase Monty. She's been brought in as a late replacement. I'm just trying to work out who we haven't seen yet in this game who might have been um, withdrawn fairly early. In fact, I'm not sure I've seen Hannah Davies out there. Oh, we have. 
In that case, we have, and I apologise. With the, having the same name, I seem to pick up where she is. You don't even have to look at the vibes. The Southport will get it forward along the right wing. It was beautifully taken by Davis. Works well. That wasn't Davis, but she's gone to Barron. Barron finally drops one. It can happen. Balcom tried to evade one tackle. Just able to get it up the left wing, but it will be a boundary throw in over in front of the Marquise. And watch Megan Hunt. She's gone straight to that square, side by side with a the teammate. There are a few players in the comp who read the game as well as Megan Hunt, although it has resulted in a turnover. And so thumped by Landwehr, Northern Territorian, off the chest of Clark, another boundary throw, and his play just gets a little bogged down on the southern wing. Southport by eight. While I would, I would we don't have live stats, I'd imagine possession would be even, but when Southport have had the ball, they've gone deeper more regularly. I don't remember Southport having, oh, sorry, Bond having too many deep inside 50 entries. Speaking of Hannah Davies, she's just come on replacing Lappin for a spell. But you're right, Southport tend to put on the boot faster. Bond, love a steady handball. Probably gone a bit too fast this time. It's just getting congested again on that wing. Just so much pressure from each team. No ball, no possession is going unanswered by their opposing team. And we have just over two minutes to play by the clock on the grounds here. Not sure I've seen Lee Alder. I saw her at the ground before the day, but I'm not sure I've seen her on the field. Tara Harrington bursting away from the pack. The kick was hurried under a bit of pressure and in the end landed in no woman's land. Overrun by several players. Focus is brought to ground. So the turnover is immediately turned over. Nolan up towards centre half forward, looking for Ivorak. Turned over again. Pluples is the beneficiary. She'll go straight up the middle over the chasing pack. Hunt's come a long way back. Needed a clean pickup. Didn't get one. Balkan looking for a captain Lightfoot, being harassed by Hannah Davies. Davies, the first captain of the Southport women's top grade side. And the counter attack from Southport was brisk. Southport by eight, about 80 seconds remaining. And again, we'll see Maddie Watt and O'Brien cause another ball up. They rack up the tackles, don't they? O'Brien, great jump height for not one of the tallest players out there. And Maddie Watt, well, she'll swing wide. They've got the space, just need to use it well. Milne, she just can't quite get there. So Megan Hunt's lining up with that. And that is a beautiful take from who else, Baron? The Baroness is holding court. We just see Ship come off and Gregory place her. So Baron, well, judging by the run up here, she's going to have a swing at this. Oh, I think this is well within range. And uh, Rihanna Ship just came off. I'll praise her in a moment. But first, let's, uh, let's see Baron, if Baron can drain this one. Odds are she will. Dakota Barron, the straight line just needs the distance. Beautiful swing, but it goes behind. She looked disgusted off the boot. What handballed the ball to Ship? Ship fumbled initially, had to get around Nayali Milne, did so cleverly as the quarter time siren goes, and then was able to deliver the ball above Dakota Barron. Unable to finish off the job, but Southport threw goals to Megan Hunt and Megan Fogus. 2 4 16 lead. Bond Universities with their goal to Ariana Clark, 1 1 7. Quarter time in the Bond University AFL at Quaffle W. Apologies. Round two. Thank you for joining us on the AFL Queensland YouTube channel.
Is it seven? Six. Six. That's where we're at. Oh, okay. Have you been told what a blade of your tools are like? Because all I'm told is that's the image of the scoreboard is wrong. I just need to see what your scoreboard looks like and the instructions that you have. So, bottom line, I think that's the first one. So, um, that, that's just how it works. Welcome back to Term 2 of the Bond University Quaffle W Clash between the Southport Sharks and the Bond University Bull Sharks. It's the Shark Stoush. Daniel, which edition are we on now? This is number seven. Number seven. It's, uh, it hasn't taken long, and of course they're ahead of schedule because they've played finals in both years that they've both been in the competition. Yeah, two huge sides. And let's talk about Southport for a second because their internal pressure between the players, or perhaps pressure's not the right word, knowing this group, but the... Uh, the competition. The competition yeah. for that right in the seniors' side is immense. And one, I guess, out that we've had this week uh, is Maggie O'Connell. And I wanted to bring this up because it doesn't speak of her ability. What it speaks is how competitive this club are and how great you have to be and constantly on you have to be to get in that top side. Southport has become a destination club for women's footballers very, very quickly. The people t there talk about the facilities. Mm -hmm. They talk about the support they get from the coaches and the support they get from each other. Maggie O'Connell, equal leading goal scorer last year, remains a fine footballer. Suddenly, Peter Doherty had access to Dakota Barron. I don't think, uh, if you've been watching the first quarter, you don't need a silly old bloke sitting in the grandstand to tell you why she's put her, um, busted her way into the first side. But what they have done is um, uh, made lemonade out of lemons by giving Maggie O'Connell the captaincy in reserve grade. So they're building her up as well. And it does make you wonder, or it makes me wonder, what would it be like if we had them both on the same side? And maybe that's something we'll get to see later on in this season. So Havana Harris, good first touch. And a great boot there. Lappin chases. Can't quite get her hands on it. And Bond swooping in a little fumble. And she'll be held back by that. Pushes in though, numbers everywhere. Southport smart to work back. And now they'll switch down. Ship can't quite get the foot to it. Plenty of pressure and a good swing there, but straight into the hands of the opposition. Balcom did a brilliant job uh, wrestling away Megan Hunt. Work around the back from Alana Welsh. She's got plenty of zip about it. Plays the one two with Watts. Goes towards centre half forward. Harris. Drops one just under a bit of pressure from Georgia Davis as the two very skillful rucks meet at uh, the edge of the 50. And Molly Jennings will blow that up. Entertaining passage of play. The work from Lloyd, Shayla Lloyd on Dabu to get it through to ship. She dropped the mark, recovered, and then Balcom's work at the back was extraordinary. Ship to Welsh. Beautiful sidestep. Straight down the middle. Just won't have the power on it, though. And a great chase down there. From Blair, and we're already down at Milne. She'll have a bounce. It's brilliant. She's going to go for it straight down into the hands of Clark. That was a thrilling counter attack. I was part of me was hoping that Niali Milne would just drain that so we could end the goal of the year competition now. But the work from Moody and Lightfoot to turn the ball over at halfback, straight up the right-hand side. Niali Milne is a star in the making. And Ariana Clark is a goal scorer in waiting. Well, she'll have the easiest spot of the day. Ariana Clark, beautiful swing. And Southport go bang. Sorry, Bond, my goodness, Bond Uni. Getting my sharks confused. <laughs> All the goal scorers today, former AFLW players. Ariana Clark, Megan Hunt and Megan Fogus. And set up possibly by future AFLW players. I'd like to call Grace Moody a future AFLW player. She's 29, but you know, I can build her up. But brilliant in defence and one of the bedrocks of Bond University's
premiership win last year. But that was a blistering counter-attack, and it's a three-point ball game. Two goals apiece. Southport definitely had more deep inside 50 entries in the first quarter as Hannah, uh, sorry, Harris and Davis just neutralise each other. The work through the middle. Ends up going the way of Bond. They'll get inside 50. There's no wind here that's pushing it to the left. Goes through to Maisie Evans. The handball was intercepted by Gregory. Comes back to Taylor. Taylor couldn't find Clark. Should be cleaned up at the back by Alder. Alder did well. And I did say in the first quarter, I thought it might have been Alder who was off the field, who wins a free kick for high contact. It is, in fact, Maddie Baldwin who's strapped up. And so she misses today. And that means that um, Chase Monty has come in for her debut in the Quaffles W. Gregory up the right-hand side will just spin out, goes past. Hannah Davies was looking for crumbs, as was Emma Suckling. Played for the Allies under-18 side last year, and so played at Carrara against Queensland. Not a good day for the Allies, but Suckling has a career to build. Big rotation just now from Bond as well. As Davis and Harris go at it. Ship. Little one-two. Across to Davies, it'll go too far. Picked up by Lappin. Now across to Brown. Needs to get the legs moving though. Tries to push out, but finds the hands of Bond instead. Sally Evans. Work around, ship again to Lappin. She's been greatly involved so far and it's just straight into the hands of Bond again. So it's great positioning, though, from the Bull Sharks. They've always got one or two around that square. They do set up their defence very well, and Megan Hunt put a lot of pressure on the kick out. It fell to Lappin. Lappin well off target, but she saw the opportunity, realised she had to move quickly. As the experience of Hunt, and I think it was Moody, saw the ball over the boundary, very handily positioned boundary throw in. For the Southport Sharks. I think Emma Suckling didn't realise how much time she had before and just belted the ball to centre half forward and was able to be picked off. Quiggles comes on now for Ship. Harris won the tap and they've been able to clear it. Out in front of the scoreboard. Milne has it at right half back, juggled the mark. Oh, in fact, dropped the mark. Apologies. And it'd be boundary throw in in front of the Brailsford Pocket scoreboard. Neither Ruck able to tap that one. It'll go to the ground. And have a throw up here. Hunt swings around. And we've had a throw against Hunt. So free kick to Bond. Yeah, just couldn't get her fist to the ball. Cleared from right half back, picked off by Fogus. Put back in the centre half forward. Moody read that very well, couldn't take the mark on the chest. Inside, found the run of Lightfoot. Back to Landwehr. It's hurried, turns it over to Welsh. Welsh will pop it back in, looking for the tall target of Barron. She's taken two terrific marks today, nearly had a third. It'll be turned over, cleared by Evans. Sorry, um, yes, Sally Evans. They're able to break away through Sexton, just beats Milne over the boundary. As we'd like the play to come back over this side of this wide ground, it'd be nice if... Because it's all about the commentators, of course. So Bond's saving grace right now is that defensive setup. It's so strong. They've always got at least one or two backup options almost. Davis in towards centre half forward. Barron looking for it. Just balked as she saw Lightfoot coming at her. Blair clears with the left foot. Picked up on the run by Talia Meyer. Showed her experience and skill, and yet the tackling from Pluples put pressure on the kick. It is Pluples who caused this boundary throw in 
In fact, I've completely misidentified. That's Lloyd, who is having a very impressive debut. Apologies to everyone connected with Shayla Lloyd. Yes, the commentator's an idiot. Davis, that's why Brian, who'll leave it. Sexton again to Clark. She'll have to run for this. Gregory, bit of a bump. And Southport swing it back in. Great pick up there, Mia Salisbury. Milne's got options long. Has she got the boot for it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> she does, but picked up by Southport. Not out of danger yet. And again, they'll tackle this corridor. Well, it's dangerous here, and that's why. Milne again, just lurking. And any any missed uh, skill error, she is just all over it. And drew the error from Pluples, much as Pluples did to her opponent uh, back um, sort of diagonally opposite end of the field. So the free kick is with, I believe, Bevan. Bevan sees a shorter option because the lead from Clark. She got separation from Lee Alder very early. Already two goals today for Ariana Clark. It was smart from Bevan to adjust the kick. She saw how close Clark was getting to her. P possibly left a little bit too early, but really nice adjustment. Not a lot of wind here today, so... Clark won't have to take that into account. A highly credentialed player. A sweet technique. And out on the full. They're currently Bond, they've got plenty of options, but they're all coming out at the same time. There's no sort of rotation to have that option behind. And I think it's causing these awkward angles that they're having to put themselves under a bit of pressure to snap it when potentially be easy to come in from the middle. O'Brien <laughs> puts it out wide. Ship on the run. She'll pick that up nicely. A little sidestep. Pushes back in. Who's there, though? Bond can't get the hand to it. And Lightfoot again. South. Mark dropped in the middle of the field. Sorry, Hannah. We'll get back to that in a moment. But Georgia Davis is able to clear up the left. I was going to say, they've pushed Lightfoot off the wing. She's had to go back into halfback to, um, to go into damage control. And she's leading, leading the group behind there. As a captain would. Sexton has it on the far wing. Turned over because it was beautifully read by Monty. So Monty will have the free kick. Just behind left wing. Saw the short option, but undercooked the kick again. Charging onto it was Maisie Evans, who put the shoulder on her opponent, brought it to ground. And just a little bit of hip and shoulder. There's been a good amount of physicality in this game as Selena Priest draws the free kick from Ivana Harris. As Priest looks at Harris and says, I'm you, 20 years older. Not quite, 11 years older. I was going to say. Priest, oh, the mark just <laughs> dropped from Gregory. Old. It was an ad, all right. Gregory, <laughs> over the top to O'Brien. Just got the fumbles, bit of friendly fire with Hannah Davies. What went without the ball? It's been a couple of turnovers in that one piece of play. Salisbury, very calm under pressure. And Sexton, able to defuse any danger. Sexton keeps it in front of the grandstand. Undercooked it to Clark, and Taylor Gregory said, I'll leave that for lunch, thank you. It's almost a battle of the defenders right now. Both yeah. teams able to make a bit of movement uh, in this middle third, but as soon as it hits the 50, each team's defenders are just so on right now. Well, it's very congested at the moment because both teams like to play a high defence, and they're, uh, as Ben Standard likes to say, making the field small. Making sure that every ball is contested. We're on the far side, so I'll, I'll take over as it was... Maya, I think, kicked the ball into the body of a teammate. Ivorak's come a long way back looking for some action. Maya again followed up with a good second effort. Kalija, who's capable of spectacular marks, takes a relatively simple one there. They are playing a short 15 today. I would like to see the umpires make sure the ball goes 15 beautifully picked off by Alicia Gordon. She read that yesterday. As Gordon will go to centre-half forward. 
She'll have better kicks than that. It was picked off by Grace Moody. Clever play. And that one, Davis unable to get to. So Bond making good movement down the field. Great take by Balcom. And she was surrounded. She was a one on four and she won it. And she was the shortest person in the contest. Goes over the head. So they'll have to chase for this. Southport just trying to press eject. But Bond continuing to push. Good work from Harrington to get that one up. We'll go down the wing. It's still pretty fierce from Southport, making it difficult for Bond. And there we go, nearly. Ship with the defence. Stop the shot from land where they pushed Bond University wide. They're still on the attack. Lightfoot's run down the wing before was spectacular. If anything, she's getting faster with age. Harrington tries to get around Watt and succeeds. Looking for a lead up forward. Had the run of Ivorak. Went underneath her, went without it. And Lloyd again is having a spectacular debut. And the commentator's curse kicks in as she kicks it away. And Bond have the free kick on the far side. Decent crowd in here. Obviously, a lot of the away fans can come because it's not so far away. Welsh, three players in that pack, all of them Southport Sharks. Mark not paid to Gregory. She kicks to the middle of the field. Again, communication not going exactly the way they want. Nurse was pushed over. Turned over to Bond. Land where? Got options on the side. Nice outlet. Evan, she wants to go left into the pocket. And that's a beautiful pass. And she's going to keep playing. Charlotte Taylor. Oh. Just to the side. No, just oh, no. short. Just short. Not just enough short. wheat picks. Been running too many marathons over the off season. Is that it? Too much erosion. She, she's a very fit woman, Charlotte Taylor. And uh, very proud on her Instagram of the long distance running she's been doing. Yeah, need some weight training, Charlotte. Come on. The Southport have it up the left side as Daniel stops sledging people fitter than him. The marking contest, that's Fogus. The marking display, rather, has been exceptional today. Fogus looking for options. Eventually saw a nice, safe one in the form of Pluples to her left. You'll see from other scores that both of these teams, how defensively strong they are. And it absolutely shows when they come up against each other. Hunt and um, Pluples playing a 1-2. Pluples goes well inside. The hands from the defender just took the ball away from the Southport attack. Blair did everything right until the miss kick. Beautifully picked up by Sally Evans. She had a lot of pressure on her. The sky ball goes past Iverac. Good bump from Harrington. And Sexton's able to propel the ball forward through the middle. Just goes round the side of the retreating Bevan. Got the hands to it. Southport had a lot of numbers around the pack. Good work from Welsh, and I think she's drawn the free. In fact, I thought one of them went over the shoulder, but the umpire, Molly Jennings, was a lot closer than I am. Milne has the free kick for holding the ball. Nani Milne, good option, and swings round. But Priest, she is very experienced in that back position. 99th Quaffle W game today. Been around a while. 2016, she came down from Cairns. Gee, Rihanna Ship's been exceptional today. And Taylor Gregory, she's getting the hands to it. Just slight fumbles, though. So Southport, got a few options. Doesn't quite go to anyone, though. Forces the chase down. And Lydia Ball in. Gemma Blair was last year's uh, scholarship holder here at uh, Bond University. Was very highly credentialed coming up from Tasmania. You can see those sorts of things there, just diffusing danger, a few what you might call more professional moves. She's just adding more to her game every week. And, uh, well, she's a premiership winner now. Back to Davis. Rucks herself. Don't we all? <laughs> Into the middle of... Oh, Clark. Tries to disrupt the flow. Southport, though, ship again. Just a little drop, that famous sidestep back into the middle. And Zarafa 
throws straight to the corridor. They'll go down. Who's there? Incredible take. Who do you think there's, Hannah? The Baroness. I'll stop calling her that because the family's probably going, eh, we heard it. So, but no, Dakota Baron. We are watching a display from her tonight. But not on the scoreboard. The marking's been excellent. The conversion not so, so far. Here's probably the best angle she's had so far. She's warmed up, had a few pings. Will this be the one? And it is. Dakota Barron hits the scoreboard. So Southport continue their lead here. Not out of danger by any means. This is incredibly close, 22 to 18. To 13, sorry, just correction. That's 2-1-13. Oh, uh, oh. You're right. No, no, no. I forgot uh, my glasses today. <laughs> that is not the sort of thing you admit on air, Hannah Davies. You'll learn that in time. But no, the um, uh, again, we've seen some rapid counterattacks. But even when they've been losing out some of the marking contests, Southport, they've had more numbers around the ball more often than Bond has. Now, whether they can sustain that for four quarters is always the question. But so far, they are outrunning Bond University. That's not a sentence I say all that often. Havana Harris gets the better of the ruck contest against Georgia Davis. They could be teammates in a few years' time. Paris Lightfoot bumped off by Ship. And the handball from Fogus back to Watt. Getting involved was the debutant in Monty. Fogus been very involved. Got away from the tackle from Harrington, but her pressure turned it over to Milne. In turn, turned it over to Welsh. Watt sweeping from the back through Nurse. Nurse looks two ways, kicks a third. Davidson did well to get front position against Gordon. Goes out towards Harris. Tried to get off and, yeah, contact above the shoulder. Harris plays quickly on. She goes inside 50 or towards the 50. Looking for the run of Bevan. Priest read that yesterday. She takes front position. She is still a star, Selena Priest. Of course, it was only two years ago she won the Emma Zilke medal. And she has the last say of the second quarter. So we'll head into half time now. And don't forget, this is round two of the Bond University Quaffle W. And you're watching Bond University take on the Southport Sharks. We're ahead 22 to 13. We'll be back after this. Inside this building is a simulated hospital ward, a high-tech biomechanics lab, a commercial kitchen, and a whole virtual home. Let's explore the new Bond Institute of Health and Sport in just 61 seconds. This is the 12-bed simulation hospital ward. From day one, Bond students gain hands-on experience in allied health and exercise science. This is the Work Play Lab, which gives students the opportunity to provide occupational therapy for our youngest, while the activities of Daily Living Lab simulates a full home environment, giving students the chance to practice mobility work with our WISIS. From sprinting to golf swings, this track can track it. Using pressure sensors and high-speed cameras, it can analyze anything from age-related conditions to elite sports training. Wow. The Kitchen Lab has solar-powered, sustainable cooking stations, giving post-grad nutrition and dietetic students access to commercial-grade equipment. Thank you. Why don't you come and check out the Bond Institute of Health and Sport for yourself? Did you know Bond students have been in every Olympic since 92? How do they do it? I've got 61 seconds to race you through the life of a student in the Bond Elite Sport Program. Strap in. Bond is known for its prowess in the sporting domain. Supporting student athletes, like Mia. Student athletes have access to flexible study loads, adjusted academic requirements, and tutoring. The top tier of student athletes even receive funding to assist with their travel and competition costs. Bond also runs four high-performance sporting programs that fuel competitive teams. There's netball, rugby, AFL, and swimming. With incredible facilities throughout campus, it means you can easily transition from this to this. Whether it's producing world-class athletes or offering scholarships to high-achieving students every single year, sport is alive and well at Bond University.
Southport Sharks are leading Shark Stoush 7, 22 to 13 on away turf, which has seemed to be how this clash works, Daniel. No side has managed to win on their own home field. And uh, I'm trying to work out reasons. I mean, the answer is probably it's just one of those statistical anomalies. But, you know, as a commentator, I like to find a reason for everything, even if it's not true. But, uh, but no, today we are seeing an even contest, but I think the scoreboard reflects it. And, well, OK, I've just contradicted myself there. Let's start again. Southport is slightly ahead. They're having more territorial dominance. Bond's defence has been organised, but they've needed to be. If they weren't, then we'd probably see a margin of more like 20 points rather than nine at the moment. They've been under the pump, but they've basically been calm. That weapon of Dakota Barron and her marking presence up front, when she gets her kicking boots on, and maybe there are some nerves because this is the first game in the Quaffle W where she's been just under a bit of pressure, where she can tell there's a bit of tension in the side. And, um, yeah, well... This is an important day in her career, and it's fascinating to watch her develop even through the game. It's very important, and I think defensively, that's been the highlight for me from both sides so far. I think the fact that Captain Paris Lightfoot's gone back into defence after starting on the wing is telling of how much she's needed back there and how much guidance and leadership she brings in that position. I think that's been the strength of Bond tonight, and Southport, um, attacking-wise, are very strong as well in the midfield. Um, we've seen O'Brien, very involved, Ship, Davies. Um, there's been plenty, plenty happening. And a lot of young, younger players as well across the field. And speaking of younger players, youth and junior footy are just around the corner. So there's still time to register and join in the fun. You're watching some of the best junior, well, they're not quite juniors anymore. They've come up from the juniors to play senior football. But those young talents would have started back in juniors and youth. So visit play.afl to find your local club and it is of course local footy week it's underway and we're celebrating the return of local footy so get involved by wearing your local junior footy jumper at training and of course tag aflq in any photos on social media don't forget you can follow us on social media at afl queensland or quaffle quaffle w that's q afl and q aflw just getting back to the defense of course um, because Southport's been mostly on the attack, I didn't mean to leave out. Selena Priest has made two goal-saving marks on the line and she's benefited from players in front of her. Alana Welsh has made some very good... Uh, I mean, some of it's been spectacular because she can run so well out of defence, but some of it's just been putting pressure on the kicker so that someone like Priest behind her can just say thank you very much. So Ivana Harris and Georgia Davis will start the second half in the rucks. It's been a great battle between the two young guns so far. Neither really having the edge over one another. No. And Harris, strong tap. And so as the sun has set now, it's cooled down a little bit. Still no wind, though, across the field. So Harrington goes inside 50, clears the contest. Meyer's in a lot of space. She doesn't need a lot of space. Even had time for a fumble. Talia Meyer, Bond, reduced the margin to three points in the first minute of the third quarter. And that's got to be one of the strengths of Bond is how they come back. And you'd have to credit that to the coaching staff. But often after those bigger breaks, Bond have that ability to come back and really take on feedback, which is arguably one of the biggest strengths the side can have and particularly I mean first of all Andy Lovell has a lot of intelligent things to say I'm sure he's capable of, uh, of giving them an absolute spray but I'm told he rarely does because he knows that he's got a team that's going to listen let's analyze that goal Tara Harrington got the free kick played on quickly saw Talia Meyer in an acre of space unfortunately I don't know why the acre of space was there but probably the first time we've seen the Southport defense just really caught out of position because there's no way Talia Meyer should have had her own postcode around her Davis, good tap to Hunt. Maddie Watt flies down. Great kick. Straight. Oh, just misses. 
Take him down. Who can get hands on this? Southport do. They'll swing round. Trying to push it out of danger. And it'll be held up. Going to praise Mia Salisbury there. It was her who slowed down the attack. Nearly got a kick away as well. It's probably the best game I've seen her play at this level. Southport still in the... Um, on the attack through Welsh. Comes across. The kick was put in by Shayla Lloyd. Goes across the face of goal. It wasn't a shot. It was definitely looking for a teammate. Boundary thrown in a handy position. Southport on the attack. Just to rewind about a minute. How good was that flick from Megan Hunt out of the centre? Got Southport going straight after the goal. They've been stung in the first minute. Over the back of Barron went to Hunt. Tackled by Sexton. Zarafa. She's brought to ground as Bond noticeably matching the numbers in the contest. It's when Southport can break free of the contest and get it wide that they look most dangerous. Harris used her body well, found Sexton, played it back comfortably to Davidson. Her kick was off target, taken by Lloyd. That is a beautiful defensive mark. And Sophie Balcom played mostly reserve grade last year. Played half a dozen first grade games. But her off-season's been exceptional as it comes out to light foot taken by Alder over towards Lloyd. We just saw this, didn't we? Yeah, Bond's just anything that's slightly in the air. And Southport just not um, manning up as tightly as they probably should. They put pressure on that, though. Zarafa was able to gather at the back and found Georgia Davis almost exactly in the middle of the park. They've got options wide to the left here. Has Davis seen her, though? Lloyd is pretty free. Davis going to run through. Goes over Barron. And Megan Hunt, she is free. Will she be able to swing round? Oh, just hits the post. You often get a bit of dew on the ball at this time of night. I'm not sure if that's why she didn't have the clean pickup. Pre-ACL injury, Megan Hunt would have just had Velcro hands. And I dare say she's probably only a few matches away from regaining that kind of skill. Harris on her bike straight away, comes up the near side. Milne holds the body. Lloyd again. Bond will just work this around. Coming out to the wing now. They'll settle here. Harrington's free, but they'll go past her. Straight to Milne. Can't get a hands on it, though. Sexton to Milne. Moving left. Good movement from Welsh. It just went through her hands. Falls loose to Taylor. Taylor wrapped up very quickly. Good presence as the Southport numbers come through. Welsh clears. She's got a good thumping boot on her to Brown. Brown under pressure from her opposite number in Moody. This is pushed sideways by Meyer, the goal scorer at the beginning of this quarter. She creates space. Handballs back inside to Davidson, who'd come up nice and high. She clears the contest. Not able to be taken. Beautiful run through the middle by Nurse. She's done a few good things in the last couple of minutes. As Gordon brings the tackle on just outside the 50, brings the stoppage. Salisbury again. Often when Bond are able to break down the attack, Salisbury's been there tonight. Davis takes that one unopposed. Zarafa runs past it. Meyer had her kick smothered straight away by Ship. Ship on the ground again, just... Came up without it. Tricked Moody into tackling her. I can't remember the last time for a night women's game here at Bond. We had the stands with that many people in them. And I hope that in a few years' time, people are listening to me and saying, you call that a lot because by then the stands will be full on a night like this. And Daniel, that's what a double premiership brings. It is. And that level of success. And also, I think people valuing this contest and realising, hang on, we're seeing stars of the past, present and future playing in a state league game with free entry. Bogged down in the middle of the park for the moment.
Davis getting the better of the Rucks. As Imogen Evans backed into that contest. Good to see, I mean, obviously um, sad for Imogen that she got delisted from Collingwood, but selfishly, very glad to see her back in this competition. Excuse me. The High ball, no one able to grab it though. Southport slowly but surely moving down the field. It's a bit, a bit like a rugby mall moving forward, isn't it? Or inching forward. It absolutely is. Centimetering forward. Metric, Daniel. Gregory nearly socketed that. And yeah, kicking in danger. Kicking just, in danger. Yeah. just a little, little discipline in the moment. As, as unfortunately uh, is that just straight into the hands of Brown. As Lappin comes streaming down, I'd love to see them play on and find her. And it's just caught up in a sea of sharks. And Bond, it's the Bull Sharks who'll take the better of that clash. Light foot in the centre of the tackle again on Fogus, who good on her for trying to take on that many people, just didn't work. Sexton makes her run for it, Milne, on the wing. Spun round, but actually didn't have anyone near her. Yeah, nothing worse than throwing a great dummy to no one. Oh, just an unfortunate miss there. Which her friends will turn into a gif by the end of the week. The Niali Milne air swing. And the only reason it's funny is because it's Niali Milne who's just so talented and capable of brilliant passes. She's been involved in pretty much everything. Great smother. Sexton. And who is it? Milne. This one hits. No one there, though. Yeah, he didn't have a lot of time to think about options. It was just a case of get it forward and rely on your skill to get it in the right place. That one didn't. She'll hit more than she misses, Milne. Harris loose. Harris was able to get a shot away under immense pressure. Misses to the right-hand side. Doesn't need much, does she? Margin back to three. Was three. Megan Hunt hit the post at the other end earlier. Havana Harris just misses with what would have been, well, about to say an impossible snap, but that's a contradiction in terms as well. Southport playing down the south. Getting ahead of Welsh. Turned over by Southport. It might have been Balcom coming through at the back. Kick through by Bevan. Bevan looking towards the goal square. Taken over the back by Clark. Thought about playing on. Settled behind the contest. Havana Harris drew the defenders. They needed to be around her. All she did was bring them under the ball. And Ariana Clark said, well, it looks like I'm in the perfect position. Thank you, Havana. This for a lead change. One goal last week, two so far tonight. It's been a long time in this game since Bond led. They do now. I really hope for the audience sake they can pick up the sound effect coming from... Yeah, otherwise I just sound like an <laughs> idiot, don't I? But again, you talked about the influence of Milne. That was sustained forward pressure from Bond, though. They were working up the right for a long time. Harris is behind, and then we're able to turn over the, uh, the kick out from Southport. be interesting to see if the pressure increases on Clark, given that's three for the evening. Well, you can, you know, you've only got five defenders and, you know, you've got Harris there, you've got Clark there. Ivorak we haven't seen much of, but, um, but you know, that happens in the forwards where sometimes the play just goes away from you. But uh, she kicked a hat-trick last week and she was, I think, number three or four goal scorer in the competition last year. Ivorak will have her nights and she may even have an influence in this game. I think she's still around. Yeah, there she is. Davis, great tap. But Bond already on the move. Good little fend off. That was Nolan. Around to Harris again. O'Brien 
taken down by Imogen Evans. Bonds already moving back. They've got numbers to the side. Great long kick into the hands of Clark. Drops it though. Southport smart to move quickly, but Bond again leading with numbers. That's Welsh. Just needs to settle, and she does. Great sidestep around the speed and agility on the youngster. Incredible. It'll go the way of South of Bond. Sorry. Yes, yeah, Sally Evans just fumbled the ball backwards 20 meters, but she well she had possession. So it was given away. Falls to Zarafa. But plenty of bond numbers around the ball. It's definitely changed from the first half. It's not quite as dominant as Southport were at each contest in the first half as Sally Evans handles again. Goes through to Salisbury. Salisbury looking to return with interest. Thought about blazing. Decided not to. There were good hands from, I think, uh, Lappin in the middle. Charged down by Nurse. Watt cleans up. Milne with the turnover. Through to Harris. Harris dumps inside 50. It's into a lot of space. Clark needed a clean pickup, got a fumble. Southport had four defenders around, eventually cleared by Welsh. Stays inside, but maybe had a little bit more time to assess her options. Milne comes inside, finds Harrington. It's a Suns Academy training session, although, as Andy Lovell says, they're Bond players who happen to be at the academy. Played across by Evans. Looking for Meyer. Meyer turns away from her opponent. In space. Talia Meyer. Classy. No, it wasn't. It was a behind. She missed. I got lost my bearings. I do that about once every four games. It's getting dark down here. That's good. Yeah, I like that it one. Is That's good. Definitely. No dark. apologies, but how good was the turn and spin from, from Talia Meyer? Oh, it was great. And I, I think a few efforts today have, you know, missed or gone to the side, but the what do you call it? The pre-movement has been what has... Movement off the ball. The movement off the ball has yeah. been what's so impressive. Some players on the far side. Again, Southport attacking down the right. Pluples just fumbling and a couple of clean pickups and they'll be able to get out as the kick is smothered off the boot of O'Brien. She breaks a tackle. That's the Steph O'Brien we know and love. Pilfered away from Fogus. As the work came in from Blair... Kicked it away. Monty's done some good things tonight. Comes near side through Welsh. Megan Hunt goes chasing. She's up high. Who she got though? No one near. Southport just lose that opportunity. Stolen from Bond. Maya, great into the middle to Ivarak. She might have a swing at this. No, she's clever. Goes in. And that is taken up by Davis. Davis switches it to the scoreboard side. We'll play through Pluples. Just over the head of Nurse. Clever. Nurse just handballed it underneath Lightfoot. She's outsmarted Paris Lightfoot. How do you... I can't do that. I made that sound like it should be easy. So Megan Hunt is just forced to come pretty high right now. Just not seeing any movement close enough for her to have a crack. She got a good pick up before and then suddenly found herself surrounded by three bull sharks. So she wasn't able to get a handball to a teammate the way she'd like. Used her body extremely well there. Balcom was looking for a push in the back. It wasn't coming. Came through Brown. Falls in front of Gregory. Stepped inside Davidson. Davidson did well to knock it from her hands. No prior. Moody appealing, in fact, Moody read the umpire's mind. And they are, oh, just, no, I think that was just dropped. Um, Davidson wasn't trying to milk it. Davidson has the free kick, eventually rewarded for her efforts at left halfback. Davidson moves wide, saw the short run, used it. Maybe the kick was just slightly high. It wasn't far off. As the reserve graders of both sides warming up in the background, that's going to be a first-grade quality battle between the Bond and Southport reserve grade sides. Won't be live-streamed, but if you're anywhere near Bond University, you will see some talented footballs running around. Footballers running around, apologies. Maddie Watt behind the contest. Handballs in field to Welsh. Welsh has done that a few times tonight. She's looked impressive. Up towards the contest, Barron's there. Was nearly taken by Gregory in front. Barron regathers. Brought to ground. I thought she got fist the ball. Umpires a lot closer, didn't see it that way. They're paying attention to Barron. 
And Sophie Balcom in defence, and I think she had help from Sally Evans on that occasion. But Balcom has been super impressive in the defensive line for Bond tonight. And I think she looks to have that spot sewn up for the year. Although commentators saying that is normally what causes injuries, so I should probably shut up as Blair has it at fullback. Southport, wrap them up. Gregory taps across to Lappin. Hunt to Watt, who pushes out wide, but no one's there. It'll be a foot race. Huge tussle here. Bond. Able to take possession again. Welsh breaks free. Can't quite find a teammate though. Barron's lurking. She takes down player. <laughs> it's dark out there. I'll give you a hand as Balcom got it back to Blair. Blair, her kick was partially smothered. Good work from Meyer, who's turning up in all parts of the field. Was kicked away in a hurry. What got front position ahead of Nolan? Last year's reserve grade grand final best on ground and brought to ground just outside the 50. Very late, just a minute and a half to go in the third quarter. Bond Uti leading by four. They have made a move in this third quarter. As then as Brown is brought to ground. In fact, that was Monty by Harris. Monty in the ruck. Skilled player, was listed to play reserve grade tonight. Got a chance in top grade and she's taking it. Welsh got the ball from Nurse. Continues up the right. Gregory had the position. Couldn't hold on to it, but regathers. Looks around outside. Needs a target up front. It's a two-on-one in favour of Bond was taken very well at the back from Jasmine Davidson. Superb work at centre halfback and then hits it on the chest of Abby Bevan.
go back to the most recent example we can think of is this happening at the Gabba last year. The Lions were well in control when the outage happened. I've actually forgotten who they were playing that night. Forgive me. I know there are people screaming at the screen right now and wishing that the comments weren't turned off the YouTube video so they could sock it to me. But momentum shifted after that, uh, after that delay and the Brisbane Lions uh, men ended up getting the win. But you're absolutely right. Let's talk about the third quarter, which itself had a momentum shift. Bond University came out after the halftime break and to oversimplify, they were getting more numbers around the ball, whereas they were getting outnumbered at contests regularly in the first two quarters. They were generally, again, there were times when it was sort of four on eight um, for Southport, in favour of Southport in the first half. Bond have had a few contests where it's been five on three or six on four, those kind of things. As uh, we're currently battling bugs at the moment, uh, Hannah's hair is normally a luminescent red, but there's certainly little bits of black just dotting around it at the moment in a way which um, I don't know who Hannah's hairstylist is, but you're going, no, no, I worked so hard. <laughs> Pair by Sandy, <laughs> if you did want to know. But, um, <laughs> Hashtag. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, no, we're taking it seriously. We are, the cameraman's just uh, informed us. Thank you to Double Take for the work they're doing, probably back in the studio at Cooperu as well. But we thank them for their work with AFL Queensland beginning in 2022. So a few little differences, I guess, we can see from the players. Southport to our left, looking a little bit more casual. Not a whole amount of chat going on. It looks to be just kind of waiting to see what's happening They're quite now. relaxed. I've got to make an assumption because it is uh, clearly very dark here. Bond look potentially to still be talking tactics we've got clear we've got a clear three groups again i make yeah. mention of that because as i said these little moments here have a huge impact on what will happen next and given the score line is so close if this gets underway anything could happen oh. in fact i might even ask ben if he can just shift the camera around to the right slightly so we can see the the bond university huddles because uh, they are very much in game mode and, and uh, am, I don't I, am I surprised? Not really. No, no, no. And I don't think there's anything wrong with either approach. It's a case of coaches knowing their players. Yes. Some players you need to give them a break. You need to let mm. them switch off. Other players you know that their, their re-entry speed mm. um, is a bit slower, so it's better to keep them focused and on the game and assuming that it could start restart at any second. The umpire's looking very relaxed in the middle. But, um, but yeah, they might be... Andy Lovell's still issuing instructions... And as you say, there are the three distinct groups. He's with the midfielders at the moment, so Sexton, Landwehr, Taylor. And just as we say that, uh, Peter Doherty has come out. So we, you pretty much assume that, right? He's let the players have a little mental break, but he's come back down and they split into their group. So we're back to business. Well, as we the lights begin to illuminate the field, it's still a little bit dark across the right side well, the, half the bulbs are on the lights at the moment, and I don't know what I'm talking about. I do wonder if perhaps the way to turn lights back on after an outage is not to put just, you know, flick the switch and put them all back on at once. You make sure that the load is going to hold, as it were. But you're right. You identified the exact moment where Southport decided, OK, we're switching back on. Dot got control straight away. Now they're in their groups. And um, look, whatever happens after this in terms of the play won't be entirely dependent on the way that the teams have handled this uh, interruption. But it has been fascinating to see what each team thought was best for them. Absolutely. And in terms of cooling down, it's not cold per se at the grounds. It's looking to be about 22... Well, sorry, any southerner is laughing. It's 22 degrees, mm. so it's still <laughs> relatively warm. Celsius. <laughs> Celsius, yes. Um, but we'll see Bond actually, pretty much as I said it, they're going to have another warm-up. So it looks like a warm-up will be allowed as they regroup ahead of the second... Oh, no, sorry, we're going straight into the fourth quarter. Yeah, th so it has become the three-quarter time break. And with that hooter sound... I think that's pre pre-programmed. Yes, I think we may be allowing a small warm-up, you'd have to think. Yeah. The lights right now are not strong enough to continue a, um, a, a sub-elite game of Aussie rules in. Having they're, said they're that... They're not, but I, I think you're going to say the same thing, but mm. a lot of these women in years gone by have probably played in similar, if not darker, conditions. And perhaps it's these experienced players who've been through things like this and played in those darker conditions that are going to step up now. 
and speaking as the token grizzled old ex-sportsman in the in the box these are the stories that you tell years later you don't tell the stories about the days when conditions were perfect unless it was a grand final and you came through adversity it'll be and players from oversight from each side will reminisce about this in years to come do you remember the night we played at bond and the lights went out and um and yeah the story and at the moment we've got a four point ball game it is still very much in play that we could be building up to a classic finish and One of those ways of enhancing the story is what's happened. Sorry, Hannah. It's just interesting because we don't often get this time to really analyse the different coaching styles. Doc over right to the left in Southport, not sure if you can see them, but it's very coach-led as opposed to Bond, which is looking to be a lot more player-led. Um, obviously, Paris Lightfoot is has been captain of the club for many years, so perhaps that's one of the reasons why. Perhaps it's also that Southport are trailing. Maybe that's when coaches step up and direct themselves as opposed to letting the players lead the way and Bond have already taken back the field so they're ready to go it looks like Southport the one two three Sharks potentially the same cheer on both sides Daniel uh, the, the first time they played a pre-season game against each other one the Bond team were about to go one two three Sharkies and they heard it from Southport on the other side of the field and they went hang on we're the Sharkies oh no that's right there's two of us we are about to start the fourth quarter with half strength floodlights. The clock has been turned back. In fact, courtesy of Ben and Double Take, what you can see on your screen is probably brighter than what we can see here. Ben, who is a filmmaker, just gave me a shrug of the shoulders as if to say, Look, yeah, what do you think I'm a cinematographer? Actually, he kind of is. <laughs> But fourth quarter action, back to focusing on the footy. It is Bond University by four. On a night, I just wonder the historical value of what we're watching here. Matty Watt gathers behind the contest. Found the run of Alder, who'd moved up forward behind her. Pluple's chasing through on the wing, bumped off it by Lightfoot. Put the tackle on, but Southport able to regain possession until they turned it over. It was... Evans to Harris. Harris with a long thump. Space. Ariana Clark's got goal side. Handball through. Niali Mill's going to walk in. Just as they began the third quarter, they begin the fourth with a goal in the first minute. That was just a, an attack from almost nowhere. Southport had a great tap, an outlet pass, but it just couldn't find the hands. I think potentially Plupal's. I'm not quite sure there, but... Plupal's had the ball, and, and yeah, it was it was tackled off her, and um, yeah, it was just a strong tackle. Plupal's didn't really do anything technically wrong. And as well, you've got to take into account Harris. I mean, the thumping kick, how much ground that covered was so instrumental in how quick that was able to happen. Well, that is why every coach in the country is looking at her at the moment and seeing if they can possibly steal her away from the Suns, which has other implications. As Imogen Evans, who began that turnover play before just with a, the tackle and then the quick flick out to Harris then tackles Steph O'Brien this game is shifted in the second half it's Taylor Gregory who's worked very hard tonight stops Sexton hasn't had one of her most influential nights Sexton but she's popped up and Bond wouldn't want to go into battle without her Hannah Davies was crashing through the pack Rihanna ship it's been almighty tonight. Looking up towards Fogus, brought down straight away by Balcom, who's been terrific in defence. That'll be a ball up. Southport on the attack, and they need to move. They're now 10 points down. They had the lead at half time. It is a dark, dark night at the canal. A big whack through, nearly found the run of Gordon. Went behind Alder, Zarafa made sure that the turnover that Bond gained had no real value. Imogen Evans in the thick of the action again. Just a bit of pushing off the ball. Gregory went flying, but it's Harris who has the free kick. I suspect there were several forces acting upon each other at once. As Harris's long kick went to the contest, just came off the hands of, I think, Landwehr. Hacked forward off the ground. No one was within 20 metres of it when it landed. Plupal's got first hands to the ball. Then was, oh, now is that a sling tackle? That is exactly how it's been called. And Kalija 
just a little bit over enthusiastic. She held back for a second. Mm. She was going at the ball, held back, thought, I've got a better chance at the tackle. Hasn't paid off this time, unfortunately, for her side. Salisbury benefits from the turnover. Harris getting very involved in the game, but Maddie Watt, who's getting also involved. Hannah Davies timed that tackle perfectly. Wait, oh, in fact, it's not how it's been called. I thought she just waited until the player got up before. Um, yeah. Anyway, it's how it's been called. Salisbury gets the free kick into the middle of the park. Just hit the shoulder there, she did. Thank you. Imogen Evans. As they switch the play very quickly, Bond, as they've been doing for the last eight years in this competition, Taylor went forward to Nolan. Played the reserve grade grand final, but spent a lot of time in first grade last year and never let her team down. Goes underneath Collegia. The turnover goes through to Nurse, who was well positioned. Nurse will keep it on the far side. Rolls around ship, almost circumnavigated her. Clever flick from Nolan, but it was well read by Fogus. Who's done well both in an attacking and defensive sense tonight, Megan Fogus. Fogus again. Just slipping off the tackle was Balcom for probably the first time in an hour or so. Harrington few fumbles. Harrington charged away from the contest. Looked up towards Clark. She just hit the ground before it got to her. Milne. Milne looking for space. Tries the snap. Didn't get a lot on it. Bounces over everyone. This is extraordinary. Kalija tries to get there. Back to Clark. Clark, did she fumble it through or did it hit an angle? It has been touched. Just didn't quite get the roll in the right direction and hit the ankle, the ankle of a Southport defender on the way through. On such things, games can turn. Selena Priest plays left. It is dark, although the lights are probably at three-quarter strength now. They have been gradually increasing the load over the last few minutes. Zarafa couldn't get there first. Taylor just seemed to drop that inexplicably. Possibly there was a touch obscured from my vision. Underneath Pluples, Nolan attacking the ball hard. Puts pressure on the clearance. Falls to Taylor. Tried to run through two Southport defenders. It will be a ball up. Ruled no prior. As conditions return to something approaching normal. Bevan back to Sexton. Tried to draw the free kick against Ship. Didn't work. Ship was disciplined. Sexton was clever. Squirted out the side. That's a throw. Well spotted by Ashland Gardner and Southport have a chance to clear. A few options wide and they'll take their chance here. Well, she'll have to run, but the absolute speed of Lightfoot. Who was then brought down by the equal speed of Alana Welsh. They just got tangled there. I thought Welsh could have been a little bit more magnanimous. Beautiful We're going to see that. sidestep oh. from Welsh. If she and Sophie Peters play against each other, it's just going to be a sidestepping festival. Davidson did well to intercept over Imogen Evans, who held her feet well, got a push from Zarafa, went through to Lightfoot, looking for Clark front position. Lightfoot has been sensational tonight. and Clark plays on and found the run of Abby Bevan. Your point was correct. I just had to follow the play. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I was too distracted by the incredible... A feed into there. But we have to praise the second efforts of Bond. Alana Welsh did well to cause the turnover. But about 30 seconds later, Abby Bevan has a shot for Bond University at the clubhouse end. A bullet has been dodged. And Bond are not putting this game away. It's a 12-point lead, 13 minutes left. And they're allowing Southport to breathe. No time on in the home and away fixtures in the Bond University Quaffle W. So that was all seconds off the clock. Came out to, I think, Alder. Two on two contest. Look at the desperation. A boundary throw in. That was, that was the good kind of wrestle. It wasn't unwieldy. It was just full of desire, for want of a better word. On the 50, good length throw from the boundary umpire. Just went over the back, excuse me, of Maisie Evans. No space. Few arms going high. Looks like it was just around the shoulder. So we will have a ball up just inside the 50.
no clearance. And in fact, the last 10 seconds may as well not have happened, except Bond said, well, we're 12 points up. We don't mind taking 10 seconds off the clock. Maisie Evans and Georgia Davis pretty much got to hands to the ball at the same time, bursting away as Rihanna Ship. I think I'll say this is the best game I've seen her play. In fact, I've done it again. That was Lloyd. I've mixed the two of them up. Lloyd has also been exceptional tonight. Off hands, Taylor was well positioned. Goes to centre half forward. And that was Ship. So Southport with plenty of numbers, not a heap of space. Lloyd out wide. Niali Mill nearly brought down the rain. Inside from Meyer. Short to Harrington. Made space for herself. Tara Harrington. Seals, Sharkstouch, seven. Between Milne and Harrington as well, what a fantastic game they're having tonight, particularly Milne. I know, you know, soon we'll talk about who's been best on for us tonight. And I have to say Milne has been incredible. She's just supported each play really well. She's just everywhere. Every time the ball comes out of the middle, she's been someone who can turn a half chance into a 90% chance. Her work there. But also, the way that the media, and a lot of the women's footy media in Australia, is very is too centred around the draft, I feel, and I don't mind saying that out loud, with all due respect to some very good websites and writers, but a lot of the attention's been on Havana Harris, who, of course, is brilliant. We've seen tonight Niali Milne, Tara Harrington, Josie McCabe's out injured for the year, unfortunately. It's a generation that's coming through. We haven't seen as much of Bella Ivorate tonight. We haven't seen as much of Ella Collegia. They're all part of something really special here on the Gold Coast. The Southport break away through Watt, who's been incredible. That tackle looked early. Not called that way from Imogen Evans. Maddie Watt will not give up for the decade. Landwehr caused the turnover, went through to Salisbury. She switches the play to Meyer. They switched the play so quickly. Meyer calms things down. Went underneath Nolan. Got away from Welsh. Beautiful handball inside to Meyer, who just keeps providing options with her second efforts. Ivorak superb on the lead. About 60 from goal. She'll look for an option. What can you see, Hannah? A few leading options. No one with the hands, though. It'll bounce. Harris. Harris broke free. Misses to the right. She did a great job, though, to pick up that loose ball. And the explosive speed off the mark where they've got space simply because they don't need five metres to get to top speed. They need five centimetres. Davidson back on the field for Bond. Fogus back on the field for Southport. Priest clears. Lands in a pack. Bond able to cause the turnover. The handball comes inside. Missed shot. Just unable to see the player in the dark. Forgive me. But again, a minus score for Bond University. And the importance of that is that they're now out beyond two goals. So Southport needs to score three times to win. They've got time, eight minutes. But they can't get out of their own half at the moment. Selena Priest's kick outs are drawing the appreciation of the crowd, or at the very least, the chance for rhythm. The turnover was beautiful. Went through Salisbury to Milne, whose kick is charged down. Not a bad pickup of a spinning ball. Might have been Pluples underneath there. And Southport with their first attack in a very long time. Gregory chasing, has focus in support. Salisbury got around the Shepherd. Gregory was good enough to recover. Sends a floater into centre half back. Two Southport players got in each other's way and it fell to Landwehr. Landwehr looking out to Harris. The attack from, I think, Zarafa. No, in fact, Davis was there. Harris broken away. The tackle slipped below the legs, brought it down, but that was superb work from Georgia Davis as the young guns play on each other. Good work from Blair to spoil the mark. Southport trying to work inside. Taylor Gregory had a lot of space and didn't really expect it. Fogus, handballs out wide. The players for Southport just not quite in the position that their teammates want them to be. Brown is probably just a metre away from where she was wanted by her teammate. And I'm not even going to speculate whose, quote, fault, unquote, that was. What was the communication? Just coming down a little bit for Southport right now. Davidson overran it. Fogus fierce on the ground. Davidson equally fierce with the tackle. 
brings play to a halt. All this is time being taken off the clock as the lead is 20 points. And in fact, Southport have to score four times. For apologies for getting the score wrong before. But there's no way this has been a 20-point game. Bond looked a little bit sluggish in the first half. They've looked anything but in the second half. But Southport on the attack. O'Brien in towards Gregory. Imogen Evans, not for the first time, has made the play break down. And her play in the second half, she's done a lot of little things that maybe people don't notice. But Imogen Evans is back in a big way. Salisbury has been sensational. Landwehr handballs out. And they're away. The kick was charged down. Southport being able to keep it, which is what they do. Southport, when they're on song, the opposition barely gets it out of their own 50, never mind their own half. It is feeling a little bit frantic from Southport, and I think that's that scoreboard pressure. It just feels rushed to get it on the foot. As you can see there, just not taking as much time as they'd probably like to. Nice prediction, Hannah. That worked out well. <laughs> Salisbury, she's been terrific tonight. Very calm kick out wide. Sorry, Hannah. You mentioned the crowd before, Daniel, and I actually think that's almost having an impact. I'll just hold that thought. It's on the ground. Focus. Worked incredibly hard tonight. Bogging it down. And this is classic playing a game out. You keep it wide. You play for stoppages. And if you get a counter attack, will Bond know what to do with it? Southport through now, however. Cleared the pack. Barron unable to hold on. Balcom's in position yet again to pick up the pieces. And then the contest is on. Both sides numbers around the ball. Barron tried to work it inside. How calm was the handballing from Bond out of the pack? The kick went sideways. Not what was intended. Pluples is brave. Milne onto her. Milne brings it down. That should just be a ball up rather than a free kick. And that's how Molly Jennings sees it. And just on the umpires, I think they've let the players decide it tonight. They've generally blown the whistle at the right time, blown it up, stopped play when it's needed to be. Absolutely, and, and this is a pretty physical clash between the two sides, but with no ill intent. Milne had attention straight away, and in fact she's been pinged, rightly so. Maddie Watt, who the worse it gets for Southport, the more she works. Looking at centre half forward, saw a run she liked, didn't quite get it that far, cleared by, I think it was Blair, and finds Ivorak in the middle of the park. Didn't have any options up forward. Has a couple now. Kaleja. Kaleja, apologies. We'll gather the ball now. Thumps it forward. I think she thought Harrington was a bit faster than she was. A little bit unfair as it's taken by Lloyd at the back. Fumbles. Just a bit of fatigue setting in. Of course, they had that interruption of the, the lights going out as well. I'm not seeing any fatigue from Tyra Harrington, though. The chase down there, the pass went astray, but she made up for it defensively, and it's resulted in a ball up. Bevan got the better of the tap, but the clearance, if anything, has gone to Southport's advantage as they get it forward by means fair or foul. As Davidson lays an egg. Zarafa, I suspect, has Davidson land on her and bring out the excavator. Touching on the atmosphere, though, it's been pretty big here. You know, we've had an increased crowd, some pretty loud supporters over at Bond's current goalposts. As Lightfoot does what she does. It's definitely enough to shake a team, especially, you know, in the Quaffle W where they haven't seen perhaps the crowds that the AFLW gets quite yet. Georgia Davis with the intercept mark, so Lightfoot makes a mistake. It can happen. Davis goes wide. How is that mark taken? Charge down. Neither team really able to put two good plays in a row together at the moment. There tends to be spectacular play immediately cancelled out by an opponent. But all of that suits Bond, which has a 20-point lead with two and a half minutes remaining. Holding the player off the ball, so Kira Zarafa will get the free kick. In fact, Georgia Davis, rather. Zarafa behind the play. They want the last goal, Southport. Maybe they want two goals. Marked well. Dakota Barron coming a long way from goal. Thought about 
handballing to Georgia Davis, but tracked very, very well by Maisie Evans. Barron has gone to Torpedo. Off hands and eventually will be tackled through for a rush behind. As Jasmine Davidson was there to clean up at the last line. Now, last week, Hannah, we picked our best on ground at the Aspley UQ game, and then I went and watched the replay and thought, Daniel, you have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Beautiful mark taken by Kalidra in traffic. <laughs> Through the middle, good mark. Well taken by Bevan. She's been impressive up front. I've seen her as a ruck before, but playing as a tall forward tonight, it's been very good. Good work in defence. Just pushed away. The tackling was fierce. That was from Monty. Over the top from Harrington, looking for the mark forward. Brought to ground. Not long to go. And Bond have repelled a long Southport period of attack as Paris Lightfoot's moved forward. Hannah and I speculated before the game. She hasn't got a goal in this competition yet after 65 games. Zarafa will clear. Out towards Lloyd. She's been very good on Dabu tonight. Tried to get away from Imogen Evans. And I'd love to see Evans' stats at the end of this game because she seems to have been involved in most things, but I've learned that I can't commentate and analyse at the same time. So maybe she's only had 10 possessions. I'm not sure. But the number of times she's affected the play right in the engine room. Been numerous. Bond University become the first home team to win a shark stoush but can they finish with a goal not with a mark like well defensive mark dropped the siren will it count the question was did it hit the boot before the siren sounded definitely didn't hit anyone on the way through the men in the kermit costumes are having a conference Called her behind anyway, so that blows the margin out to 21 points. But the curse of the home team in the Shark Stoush has been broken. Bond University win by 21. And what an unusual game. We've had a blackout in the third quarter that's wiped out a few minutes. You've left, we're left wondering, did that have an impact? The way Bond were able to respond after halftime was sensational. I think Andy Lovell will be very happy with his side tonight. Stayed very composed. And in terms of best ons, for me, Naomi Milne had all the star power tonight. She was sensational. But I think she was supported across the ground really nicely. Paris Lightfoot rarely has an off game. Great leadership across the field. Tara Harrington, such power as well. A great outlet passes. And Havana Harris, you know, best on for the grand final last year. No surprises that, again, she's had a good one. Someone I liked... Uh, from Southport, I actually thought Georgia Davis did a really nice job as ruck. I think she was pretty much equal to Harris in terms of the rucking. I know I just mentioned Harris is one of the best, but I think that in terms of rucking, Davis had a great impact. I thought Alana Welsh was sensational. What a young talent um, they've got there. Very quickly from me, uh, for I think I agree with you for in terms of best on ground, probably Niali Milne. I want to highlight Balcom and Davidson in defence for Bond. Imogen Evans around the contest. For Southport, I think Maddie Watt was their best. The work that she did in and around the contest and the way that just the harder she worked uh, throughout the game was incredible. Shayla Lloyd had an outstanding debut. Uh, Rihanna Ship, the captain, she has grown as a player and I think the captaincy sits well with her. But yeah, Niali Milne best on ground. Maybe not the classic the neutrals wanted tonight, but an extraordinary game and what a comeback from Bond. It was, and I think this rivalry just continues to grow and grow. I think that'll, uh, you know, Southport will have a lot to take away from today and I think they'll come back absolutely firing. So that is where we'll leave you tonight. It's been round two of the Bond University Quaffle W. Thank you so much for joining us. My name's Hannah Davies. I've been joined by Daniel Viles. And we'll be back not next week. It is a, it is a league bye, but the week after for some more action. We'll catch you then. <laughs>